welcome. My name is Christina Courage. I am the owner of Grit Life Fitness Personal Training. I teach virtual online classes. I am a certified personal trainer and I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And today we are gonna review um, eight of the basic moves that I typically use in my cardio kickboxing classes, okay? So cardio kickboxing is an aerobic workout and we are basing the moves off of martial arts moves, boxing, kick, kickboxing, and we are fitnessizing them. We're going with the beat, we're going with the rhythm, uh, just to keep things smooth and to get the heart rate up. So if, if you've done, you know, disciplined martial arts, this is very different, okay? It's more dancey, it's more, we can call it fitnessized. <laughs> Um, but I'm just going to go through the way I learned and um, the benefit of learning these moves is that my class is just all of these moves in different patterns, different combinations. I keep it super, super simple. I'm usually doing, you know, two to four moves in a combination and then we just move on. Now we're also doing jumping jacks, we're doing some, you know, some other, you know, aerobic drills to kind of break up the combinations but it's just um, just a multitude. You can do endless combinations once you learn these four moves, okay? Now, before we learn the moves, I'm gonna actually show you posture and stance. In the cardio kickboxing class that I teach, um, I'm typically in two different stances. I'm in this wide sumo stance, all right? This wide sumo stance um, means I am gonna typically not be super resting into my heels, but I'm going to be pivoting and dropping my knee in. So whenever I do punches, um, I'm kind of punching evenly from left to right, I do that big pivot. The second stance is your boxer stance. This is your stagger stance. The biggest thing I would say is get in a straight line, back foot behind, behind the front foot, and then step out, and that's what we want. Knees are soft, heels slightly lifted, like you have a credit card below your heels. So a little bit more weight in the balls of the feet and you're ready to move and shift. Now, when you do the punches, watch my back. I'm not going to I'm not going to move my back when I punch. All right? So this is your basic jab. I'm not going to thrust my torso with my jab. All right? That puts a lot of strain on the lower back. By the end of the class, your back will not be feeling great. And we want the energy to come up through the legs, through the core, and out through the jab. We do not want the body to go with the punch, okay? You keep your center, you keep your center. So straight up and down, that's why you keep a wider, uh, wider stance. Now, it doesn't have to look exactly like my stance because we're all different shapes and sizes, but you need to feel balance. Like if someone were to you know, push you on the shoulder, you're not gonna tip over, okay? So what I see a lot is we get a little bit too tight and too like, you know, like a normal stance. So just keep it big and wide so you can move, you can pivot, you can shift, you can change direction. All right, let's get to the punches. In the warm up, I start, we're doing it in from a wide stance. So I'm gonna show you from there. So your hands are up in your guard position. That's a pretty basic move. Elbows are pointing down and then you're jabbing. All right, there is a little shift here. I'm just alternating a left and a right jab always start slow in boxing you do shadow boxing <laughs> before you even get in the ring in fact often you do jump rope before you do anything else so there's always kind of a progression of training you always go slow before you go fast so notice i'm not wrenching my elbow or shoulder out i do a full extension but i'm not like snapping my elbow my fist it, my knuckles are up, my palm is down at the full extension, and then when I come back, I'm rotating in. So my palm is facing in. So that's your, that's your jab, that's your jab. Your cross from this wide stance is going to be a full rotation in the hip, and I'm punching straight into that wall, okay? Now this is the one where you don't wanna be taking the, pun the body with the punch, okay? Keep, keep your shoulders wide, it's okay if you look a little bit stiff because we are not trying to be like a boxer. We do not want this boxer posture. We want open, beautiful posture, okay? So in the class, we're not doing everything exactly like we would. That's your cross, okay? 
Notice the cross is very leg dominant. It's all based on the movement of your hips and your legs. So the better you can rotate, the more you can push off your legs. That's where your power is. All right, the next one is your hook. The hook is you're gonna rotate, bring your elbow out, and then you're kind of sliding in. So you bring it out, the elbow comes up, you rotate, and you rotate it. So I, I can do a hook and actually, I'm not doing too much of this. All right, so th that's what I see. I see no hips and all, all shoulders. If you don't use your hips, you're gonna wear out your shoulders. So I'm doing a very small shoulder movement. I just take my elbow up and then I I'm just gliding. So it's like you're hitting someone right in the cheek. So that's your hook. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, but practice, you want it smooth. Um, and then of course we'd go faster in the workout. And then the final or the fourth punch that I use in class is the uppercut. And I point out the hip because with the uppercut, what I do is I drop my elbow down towards my hip, rotate, and then I punch up and away. Okay, so it's like you're coming, obviously you're coming underneath that chin. like. That's where you're hitting them. This time your palm is facing in towards you. And um, it's okay if it does, if it looks a little, you know, loosey goosey before you get like the full power. But the basic movement is that punch up and away, but rotating those hips, okay? And it's the same in the stagger stance. Usually you're gonna uppercut with that back leg, back twist, punch up and away. So it would be a hook, and uppercut. All right, then we got the lower body, okay? So this is just a very quick tutorial. The lower body, we start with the knee strikes. The knee strike is the basis of pretty much all the other kicks. So knee strike is that knee driving into something, all right? You wanna think a little bit different like than the high knee. Oh, I'm just lifting my knee up. Think contact, okay? You're breaking a broomstick handle with your knee, okay? That's your knee strike and we do, want to be careful of the back here so it can be a really low knee it doesn't have to be like super high I just as long as you're not wrenching out your back we want to make sure we're keeping stability in that lower back when I bring my knee up it, if if I'm tucking my tailbone under too much and rounding my back it's gonna go into your back so just be careful about where your posture is with your core as you're doing these knee strikes. So that's your knee strike. You just lift the knee and then you make contact. <laughs> so we use the arms on the knee strike. The front kick is, is basically the extension of your knee strike. So you lift the knee first, you chamber the knee, and then you push out through the heel. Pull back and down. I never go this slow in my warm up. So this is why we're, we're breaking it down for you now. So you lift the knee, kick out through the heel, pull back, come down. And you're trying to bring your foot right back below that hip so you're balanced, right? If you kick out and then you land out in front, you have to make sure you're, you have to shift your all your weight. So just bring the kick back where you were. Okay, so it's kick and down. All right, so you always lift and chamber the knee first, kick out through that heel. And with the front kick, you wanna think about pushing kind of pushing down a door, pushing into something with that foot and heel. It's called the front push kick. All right, side push kick. Same exact thing, just different angle, different direction. So I'm gonna lift my knee first, and then I push out. It's the whole edge of the foot, pull back, lower down. That's like slow-mo version. Kick, chamber the knee, push out, pull back, lower down. I do not like to counter lean. I like to stay up because I'm looking at my target. So I want to be looking this way. I don't want to be doing this. See how I'm completely going the other way? So I try to use my core to stay upright as I do a kick. All right. And it's really more about your center of gravity and your balance on that one. So let's try the other side. You're going to lift the knee, push out, pull back, step down. Lift chamber the knee, push out, flexing that foot, pull back, lower down. All right, finally, the back push, the back kick. So this, I call this the donkey kick. It's the exact same. Now on a back kick, you're never ever kicking straight back. We just don't have 
the angles for that with the legs, we're gonna kick more out to the side at a diagonal angle. So you're actually gonna lift the knee first, but this time your heel goes towards your butt and then you kick back through your heel. Pull back, lower down. Same thing, let's try the other side. Lift, bend the knee, chamber the knee. The heel goes towards your butt, kick back, lower down. Kicking is never about kicking high. It's about kicking into a full extension. When you kick all the way back and push the heel, squeeze your butt. You're using your glute to do that. That is your power. Okay, staying upright, tightening the core so you're not feeling this in the lower back. It's kick and down, kick and down. You're trying to make contact with that heel. That's your donkey kick, all right? And then you do it on the other side. So always start really slow, lift, push, pull back, touch down. All right, those are the eight moves that I typically use in class besides, you know, jumping jacks, heel digs. We do some speed bag stuff, like imaginary speed bag. Uh, but that's your intro to the class. If you can get those moves down, the better you are, the crisper, the cleaner, the more repetition, the more you can engage your core, your hips, your legs, the more you're gonna get out of these cardio kickboxing workouts. So join me for a cardio kickboxing class or try one of my cardio kickboxing videos. And thank you so much for watching and have fun. All right, see you later.